I have to start out with, why <laughs> is a cloud company calling itself Cockroach Labs? Well, yeah, that was a question I was expecting. Uh, just <laughs> as a preface here, when uh, we named the project Cockroach TV, that was back in 2014, I wasn't really ex intending to explain that on Bloomberg Tech technology. Uh, these days I find myself in front of uh, Fortune 500 CIOs and CTOs all the time explaining it. But really, it's supposed to be evocative of the database's capabilities. So this is a very resilient database. Think about you know, the entire East Coast going out and, uh, you know, at your cloud service provider. You want your business to keep running. And that's what Cockroach is designed to do. And as everyone who's ever had a Cockroach problem knows, they're pretty resilient. So that's, uh, that's where the name comes from. All right, so you want to be the cockroach for all of these big businesses. You're trying to take on giants like Amazon and Oracle with very deep pockets and very entrenched customers. How do you do that? Well, we have uh, some incredible advantages. Uh, for one, we're actually building this from the ground up, from scratch. So we're building a database in 2022 that uh, is going to really effectively exploit the cloud. Whereas these more traditional players that uh, have most of the market today, they have a, a really big problem uh, with a sort of an innovator's dilemma. We've got a big revenue base, a lot of legacy applications to support. It's very hard for them to reinvent themselves to really make use of what the cloud's providing. It's almost like trying to set sell with an anchor down. So we actually have this fresh start and we can really build a database that will meet the needs of the next decade. And it's important to keep in mind, especially when you, you just had the segment about uh, cloud stocks and where they're going in the current market. Uh, but the, the decade ahead is going to be extremely interesting because you're going to have more things built in the next 10 years than all the legacy applications in the last three decades. So that's an incredible opportunity for companies that really can uh, bring infrastructure to market that exploits the cloud. You just raised a massive amount of funding, $278 million, valuation $5 billion. Where do you see the cloud market going this year and how do you plan to use that money to stay ahead of it? Well, I think uh, um, you know, the cloud market is absolutely going to continue over uh, when you kind of zoom out. I mean, when, who knows what the fluctuations will be in the next uh, several months as interest rates may increase and so forth. Uh, but if you zoom out and you look at a three-year time horizon, the cloud's only going, uh, only going to go up. We, we raised this money because it was a favorable time to do, do so. We didn't quite need it. But when you look at the next three years, we will absolutely be able to use this. And it's really about innovation. That's, where, that's why we have the company we have and the customers we have and the traction we have. We need to continue that. We need to keep pushing the envelope, always setting our sights further than what the current status quo is. Uh, and also there's a, you know, just an, an, an opportunity uh, for us as a business to expand into new markets and fundamentally to support our customers. We always look at our customers' problems as our own problems. And there's a big investment uh, there in order to help companies really move, to retrench, to rebuild effectively and to build new use cases that actually use the cloud appropriately. What is the cloud going to look like in Web3? And is Web3 really a thing in your opinion? <laughs> Yeah, it's a thing. I mean, it's uh, kind of a catch-all concept in, in some ways. Uh, what will the web look like? I think it's really about just how quickly you can bring something to market and uh, how many consumers or other businesses, depending on what your, your, your company does, how many of those can you reach how quickly? And, and this is really an opportunity for infrastructure that's delivered in the cloud as a service to really propel uh, companies more quickly, to accelerate their ability to... Uh, bring new products and services to their customers and win in their verticals. So it's companies like Cockroach, uh, but also the, the, the largest companies like Amazon and Google and Microsoft that are building these hyperscale clouds. Uh, it, it's the combination of those services and the clouds that are really making it so that what used to take months or years can now be done in weeks or uh, even in some cases days. It's a pretty exciting time. We've seen a lot of engineers ending up in the CEO suite. Sundar Pichai, of course, the CEO of Alphabet. You've got Parag, now CEO over at Twitter. You're a developer engineer yourself. Tell us quickly uh, a little bit more about your journey from developer engineer to founder CEO. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit of the genesis. I'll try to make it quick. <laughs> I went to Berkeley back in the uh, 90s, and I wasn't interested in databases. It wasn't really a concern. When I graduated, just immediately, databases became a big problem. This was during the dot-com boom and scale was a big issue. Databases weren't really built for that kind of scale. 
Then I went to Google and Google had their own problems with databases. And over the 10 years I was there with my two co-founders, we saw Google build their own databases from scratch. When we left Google in 2012 and we started our own private photo sharing company, uh, it was a, a, a big problem. We saw that what Google had wasn't available in the larger open source ecosystem. And so that actually really compelled us to say, we have this big problem. We know how it should be solved. We know where the world's going because we just saw it all happen at Google. And we know in 10 years, that's what everyone else is going to be doing. Let's build the database that's really going to support that. Uh, so that, uh, that that's really a, a really great example of a good way to start a company, which is you are actually the potential customer of the product you're building. There's really no daylight between uh, the problems that I was facing as a developer and the problem that Cockroach now is solving for developers. And so it's, uh, I think that's a, a virtuous uh, start and that's probably why many uh, engineers, former software developers uh, are actually okay. finding their way into the C-suite.